Hi, this is Ken Boyd. This is the website stltest.net where you'll find links to my books and my videos and also our new think tank, accountinged.com. Dozens of hours of instruction and other features and you can try it free and enroll for three days. So I think it's a great tool I'm very proud of. So what I wanted to talk about today is, if I go to the top of this document, is going concern. What is a sustainable, viable business? If it's sustainable and viable, it is a going concern. And a big key here relates to cash flow. Cash flow has three components, the cash flow statement, operations, investing, and financing. Cash flow from operations is your day-to-day -day business. If you make blue jeans, your day-to-day -day business is buying material, making blue jeans, selling them to customers, and collecting payments. That is a viable, sustainable business that can grow sales and earnings over a period of years. If you happen to sell a building and you're in the gene manufacturing business, that is cash flow from investing. When we buy and sell assets, it's cash flow from investing. That is not sustainable, not a sustainable business. You can't grow a business if you're a gene manufacturer from buying and selling assets. Eventually, you will run out of assets to sell. So what this gets to is the third bullet point, which is a going concern audit opinion, where the auditor states that we have a concern that the business is not will not be viable or sustainable over the long term. And that usually means, in specifics, that the company has been running a continual loss or that they have a debt position that's getting bigger and bigger and their balance sheet is getting more and more unattractive and out of whack, if you will. I brought up this topic because of an article from the Charlotte Observer about Swisher, which is a cleaning company. We've actually seen these trucks on the road, Swisher Hygiene, that they fired their accounting firm, BDO. And part of the reason they fired their accounting firm was a disagreement over material weaknesses and deficiencies in the firm. And so if I scroll down here a bit, what you'll see is there was a huge discrepancy between the material deficiencies and weaknesses that the company found and material weaknesses and deficiencies the audit firm found. Big difference. So you'll see here in the specifics, the company said its own assessment of finances found no material weaknesses and one significant deficiency, while the auditor's BDO found 12 material weaknesses and five significant deficiencies. And so the point I make in a blog that I wrote is, well, some of this can be attributed to differences in judgment because some of accounting is based on estimates and judgment. Particularly in this next paragraph where we talk about a review of bad debt and a bad debt reserve, which requires you to make a judgment on an estimate of the accounts receivable you have and how much of those accounts receivable that you won't collect as a percentage. I can see a disagreement there. However, when I see such a huge disparity between weaknesses and deficiencies the auditor found and weaknesses and deficiencies that a company found, it really gives me pause for concern. So in addition to that, Swisher, because they switch auditors and they hire Grant Thornton, actually have to report that because they're a large enough company that they need to report that to the SEC. And if you click through on the article up here where it says securities finding, it will take you to the Form AK where they report that they're switching auditors. Now, my question is, how is the new auditor going to view the same weaknesses and deficiencies as the old auditor? In other words, the situation's no different, just the auditor has changed. Because keep in mind that Sarbanes-Oxley now requires comp larger companies like Swisher in this case to put a letter in their annual report from the CEO and the CFO that they have evaluated internal controls, whether or not they found weaknesses and what they did to correct them. So the stakes now are much higher for a company that is a publicly traded company and companies that have to apply, that have to comply with Sarbanes-Oxley than it used to be. So my concern is, is that because the internal control requirements of management are so much more onerous, if you will, 
with Sarbanes-Oxley, I just don't understand, and I haven't gone into detail to find out more, how these this company and this auditor can have such tremendous differences in the opinion. Another thing, area for concern is the second to the last paragraph. Swisher has delayed the 2014 financial results, saying it needed more time to complete the audit of its financial statements to assess the effectiveness of its own control over financial reporting. This says to me that Swisher, as a company independent of the auditors, is concerned with the whole process of creating financial statements, the controls. How do we create a journal entries? Are the journal entries reviewed? What about making adjustments? Who makes adjustments? Who signs off on the adjustments? We then have an adjusted trial balance that we use to make financial statements. That whole process is under review here because, as the article says, which of the client is concerned about control levels when it comes to their own financial reporting. Last sentence. The company has had issues in the past with its accounting practices and has even been sued by shareholders who say that the company inflated its share price with misleading financial results. And I'll say one more thing here, which is the real killer as a company manager when it comes to accounting is having to restate financial statements because you have financial statements that are issued that shareholders, bondholders, and other stakeholders rely on. And if you restate your financial statements, you've really got egg on your face. It doesn't seem that you're reliable and trustworthy, and it's a real problem. So interesting article that talked about both going concern and estim accounting estimates and other issues when it comes to going concerns and also related to the cash flow statement that I put in the bullet point. So go out to the you can click on the link on my blog and find this great article. From the Charlotte Observer. That's as far as we'll get today. Remember the website, stltest.net. You'll find links to my four dummies books and also links to all the videos, including this video link will be added. And also Accounting Ed, the new think tank with dozens of hours of live of recorded instruction on video. You can try it for, three, for free for three days. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.